And so, Lord, King of kings, continue to take charge of our lives, O God. The psalmist in Psalms chapter 5 declares and says, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my groaning. Give attention to the sound of my cry, my King and my God. For to you do I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice. In the morning I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness. Evil may not dwell in you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful man. But I, through the abundance of your steady first love, will enter your house. I'll go down towards your holy temple in the fear of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. And so, Abba, Father, we come before you this morning. You alone, O oh Lord, whose word has declared that for you are a God who delights, who does not delight in wickedness. Abba, Father, that is our prayer this morning. That King of kings, you move and sweep across, O oh God, across this nation, Lord, across the entire world, my master, dealing with every wickedness, Dealing with every evil, my master, Lord, that above Father, you create an atmosphere where you alone will be glorified, Lord. Jesus, many are the works of men, O Lord. Many are the works of other gods. My Lord, we come before you this morning asking above Father that you alone, O God, shall clear shall clear my master that you shall open the eyes of your people, my Lord, to know you, to seek you, to put aside all the other works of men, to put aside all the gods, my master, and they shall come to seek you, seek you only you and you alone, you the true God. And so, Abba, Father, have your way in us, Lord, and let your steadfast love always dwell in us, Always be with us, my King of glory. Blessed be your name, Lord. And as we come to worship you this morning, with you, Spirit of the living God, take charge. Take charge of each and everything, Lord, that will take place, O Lord, throughout this service, O King of glory. Right from the word, O Lord, to the preacher, my master, and to the feasting, O King of kings. Jesus, it's you that we need, Lord. Have your way, King of glory. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. The choir is going to give us one song, and then I will invite uh, Reverend Paulson to read for us the scripture for today and introduce the preacher. Hallelujah. Song number 13. Perfect. 
your seats as uh, we take uh, the reading. Church online and church physically present, praise the Lord. Our text reading today is uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 to 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 to 16. The person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, that considers them foolishness, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. The person with the Spirit makes judgments about all things, But such a person is not subject to merely human judgments. For who has known the mind of the Lord so as to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ, the word of the Lord. Our topic is understanding the natural man. On Sunday, we launched the Bible reading discipleship movement. You remember what the assistant provost brought to us? And we said that come this Sunday, we're going to be registering all of us and recruiting all of us into Bible study and being part of a discipleship journey. The person coming to preach is one of those that when he got born again, the Lord led him to the seven books that the Navigator's team does teach here and that All Saints Cathedral does embrace in our Bible study and discipleship movement. We thank God for the testimony that God has given you, Brother Michael, and we know that God will continue to use you to inspire many. We pray that on Sunday you'll also stand here to recruit many into the journey that has blessed you this far. Let's put our hands together and welcome Brother Michael Rukwago. Good morning. Praise the Lord. I know it's a cold morning, but uh, let's lighten up. We're in the presence of the Lord. My name, as you've been told, Lukwago Maiko, and I'm glad to be here. Uh, I thank uh, the provost and the clergy for allowing me to be here. And Paulson, Reverend Paulson, thank you for those kind words. Indeed, I was uh, 
one of those that took the Bible study uh, in the Navigators and completed all the books who are doing it on Sundays. They also do it on uh, Tuesdays if you, you have to go to work and uh, you think Sundays is a bit tricky for you. You can always come on, uh, on uh, Tuesday in the evening. But it's a blessing to be here and uh, I bless the Lord for the opportunity. Understanding the natural man. As I was preparing, and I was trying to find out who the natural man was. I realized the natural man is you and I. The natural man is that one who is born of woman. And I believe all of us are born of woman. Right? If there is anyone contrary to that, please raise your hand. But I believe we are all born of woman. And if we are born of woman and we are the natural man, so what is it that we want to understand about ourselves? I was wondering, do you know who you are? Do, do I know who I am? And what is it that I have to understand about being a natural man? And so, as I was reading through the scripture that has just been read to us, I then realized that actually, in that scripture, there are two kinds of man that they are talking about. There's the natural man, but then there's the spiritual man. And I want to use that to kind of help us understand who I am, who you are as a natural man, vis-a-vis -vis the spiritual man. And my hope and desire this morning is that by the time we are done, you will desire more to be the spiritual man than the natural man. Amen? That's my desire, and I hope that I'll be able to... Uh, Deliver in that sense, and I pray that the Lord will use me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Glorify yourself through me. Speak to me. Speak to us. Help us to understand, indeed, who we are in you. Help us to understand the spiritual man, and help us to be better men and women in the kingdom, to serve you and to honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, as I was doing my uh, studying, I realized that being a natural man, there are things that um, you do not understand when it comes to the things of God. And that's what the scripture that was read to us says. Because it says in 1 Corinthians 2, if you care to turn there, uh, verse 14, the person without the Spirit, does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. And th this is what the Lord is saying to us, that if any natural man will not perceive the things of the Spirit, my profession is in the area of IT and telecom. And while we were, I was training for that, there's a, a language that the computers understand. So for us here, when we are typing, you think you're typing A, B, but the computer in the back end doesn't understand those letters. It only understands two digits, one and zero. And I don't want to go into the details of it, but that language, and those days it was C++, these days I think it has, you know, uh, devolved to other languages. But the computer will never understand anything other than those two digits. So all the data that it stores, it stores in those binary zeros and ones. That's it. The rest, your A's, B, C, those are your, your languages. It doesn't understand them. And so the, the natural man would be that kind of person that... When you're talking about the things of the Spirit, they're looking at you and they're saying, what, what, what are you talking about? You know? You've, you've heard those people say, but these born agains, I think they're a bit weird. Eh? Because the things you're doing, they do not resonate with what they, the language they understand. They, they do not perceive it at all. And that's what we are going to be able to uh, learn this morning. That the natural man is born of the woman. 
the one who does not have access to divine revelation. There is no revelation as far as the natural man is concerned. He does not believe that God exists. You've heard people say this, the atheists, the critics, God doesn't exist. Who is God? I am, I am the God. You know, some people are now calling, calling themselves gods. I am the God. And then the God ends up dying. And you wonder which God that one is. But people are now calling themselves God. God does not exist. The Bible says that it's only the fools that say that there is no God. And why? Because they are natural, they are the natural man. They are not understanding the things of the spirit. They will say God does not exist because they believe that there is no other God other than them. The natural man will rely on his own wisdom. The wisdom of the world. He knows nothing of the things of God. He has no ability to receive the sacred truth. That ability to perceive and receive the truth of God does not exist as far as the natural man is. He has no ability. He has no mind that can perceive the things of God. That's the natural man. The natural man lives without reference to any spiritual issues or matters. In their vocabulary, there is nothing concerning spiritual uh, matters. And even as I say this, try to begin to reflect on yourself, you individual self. Are you able to perceive these things? Are you able to re receive those signals that speak about the spiritual uh, things of God? The natural man, eh, interestingly, has common sense, is academically uh, qualified in the worldly sense, PhD, masters, whatever. They have business acumen. They are able to do business. They are able to excel in every worldly thing that you may think of. But then when it comes to the things of God, they will say, look at this one. With all your education, and then you're there, Ambu, eh? raising up your hands. What are, what's wrong with you? you know? They believe that you are, you, are, you are really insane to have all that education and you're still able to believe somebody who does not exist or that you don't see. At least that's what they think. That's the natural man. And we need to begin to ask ourselves, where do I lie? Sometimes, and please don't get me wrong, education is good. It's good to be educated. It's good to be, you know, excel, go to Harvard, go to Yale, come back with your, you know, qualifications, absolutely wonderful. But if that is going to hinder you from understanding that God exists, that God is sovereign, then all that is useless. Useless. Absolutely useless. And we have people like that who believe, I have my PhD. So when I come to speak, please humble yourself and listen. Because I have a PhD. And the things of God do not matter to them. They feel like that is, that is nothing for them. Listen, I'm presenting a paper. This paper I presented in the U.S. before the Senate or whatever. And they feel like that is the top of the world. But let me tell you something. That is the natural man. Remember, we're looking at understanding the natural man. Understanding the natural man. Tell your neighbor, you are a natural man. You are a natural man. Other than Christ in you, you are a natural man. Like it or not, other than Christ in you, you and I are natural men. It is only Christ that helps us to become better and spiritual men. You know, there are people who actually listen to a wonderful message. I may not be preaching well, but there are those who preach very well. And the message is wonderful and it blesses people. And there are people who listen to it and they are like, you know, it's a normal message. It doesn't touch them at all. It doesn't even change them. It's like they are listening to a song maybe by some secular world. And that's, it ends there. 
a message that has blessed thousands and they are critiquing it, they are talking all kinds of things about it, and yet the same message has blessed other people. What's the difference? The difference is that this person is listening to this message in the natural sense. It's just a message. Another person listens to it with the help and interpretation of the Holy Spirit. And they are blessed. And they leave this place when they are blessed. They are not the same. Same message, listened to by two different people, and they perceive it differently. For a natural man, every time the word is being spoken, we are here. People are being blessed. And you find people, as soon as the message is being preached like this, sleep. They begin to sleep. They begin to sleep. And sometimes we think it's just sleep. But guess what? The enemy knows how to attack us in that area. Because he knows the important part is the word. When you're singing and jumping, you are very alive. You are very okay. Everyone is singing. You're worshipping everything. You are alive. The moment the word begins like this, boom, you start, you know, nodding yes to the preacher. And that's the enemy that immediately brings the spirit of slumber to you in your natural sense. Because you have not attached that spiritual importance to this word. You have not understood what the word means in the spiritual aspect. Because the word is actually what will help you grow in your spiritual life. And so we have many people in our midst or many people many times who find themselves in situations where, where they are being uh, attacked by the enemy because they are walking in the natural man. But the spiritual man, it's a spiritual man, the spiritual man, hallelujah, the spiritual man is one who is supernaturally endowed with the spirit and thus is qualified to bring those words which the Holy Spirit is teaching him or her. And you see that in verse 13. If you read verse 13 of the scripture we read today. Verse 13. Um, if I can read for you verse 13 so that you, you get what... First Corinthians um, 2, First Corinthians 2, verse 13. This is what it says. This is what we speak, not in the words taught us by human wisdom, right? But words taught by the Spirit, explaining spiritual realities with Spirit-taught words. Everything originates from the spiritual. It's not your education. It is not your qualification. It's not your eloquence. You can speak very well. No. But speaking what God has given you to speak. And I pray that I, that's what I'm doing right now. That I'm not just speaking my own words. To comfort you maybe. I took time to pray and, and, and uh, I seek the Lord. This morning by three hours up trying to seek the Lord. So I'm believing that the Lord is speaking to us. And they are not my own words. Amen. Amen. So the spiritual man. We are looking at the spiritual man. The spiritual man is he whose life has been infused by the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Infused by the spirit of God. In addition to and superseding the knowledge of the world that the natural man has, spiritual man has a spiritual awareness, eh? an alertness, a spiritual awareness that affects how they view everything. From, I've, some people have taken it to a higher level. In the morning, they are talking to God and saying, God, what do I put on this morning? So you don't just come here because you want to put on a suit like me, uh -huh. or you want to put on this nice dress. They ask God, what can I put on? And the Spirit speaks. If you are alert, the important thing is the alertness and the awareness and the willingness. Are you willing to listen to the Spirit? 
And are you able to communicate with God? Because sometimes we think God is that person we come to. God, this is my list. I want A, B, C. Please, God, hear my word. I'm suffering. And then you go away. But God allows you to talk to him. He says, God, I want to be smart. What can I put on this morning? And the Lord speaks to you. Strangely, I used to do this. I, I stopped. But whenever I would be driving to town, before I get to town, I tell God, but God, I don't want to struggle with parking. Please create some parking somewhere where I'm going so that I don't struggle with parking. Believe it or not, believe it or not, I would drive, either I would find someone reversing out or I would find an empty spot. This is in the middle of the day when you expect town to be full. And I would tell God, I want a parking. The other thing that used to disturb me a lot was when I was a bachelor, I had a batch of keys. And I don't know if there are bachelors here. I had a batch of keys. I would have put all the keys on one batch. So when I get home at night, I didn't want to struggle because they were a bit similar, looking for which key opens the main door. So I tell God, when I'm, <laughs> when I'm opening this door, please help me to put the right key. And indeed, when I put the right key, choop, it would open. It would open the door. And I would say, thank you, Lord. God, you have to have that kind of relationship with God where you talk to God not only on matters which are urgent, school fees, school fees, Lord, you know. I am dying, Lord, heal me, heal me. Talk to God also on those issues that are sim simple. They seem simple, but you develop a relationship with God and that alertness and awareness that they are talking about. Amen. The spiritual conscience has been raised from the dead. When you get to that level, your spiritual conscience has been raised. We, we, we had um, our people's warden, uh, Dr. Kedres, on Sunday uh, speaking to us how she was faced with all those temptations that we all go through. Yeah? But at all times, she, she, her spiritual antenna was alert. She would not allow to to, to, to concede to those temptations in the position where she was. And I know many of you are in well-to-do positions. I'm told all saints, we are the ones who have, you know, uh, people that have good jobs and are doing well. I don't know. But even in your positions, you are faced with these temptations. You know, you're driving, the traffic man stops you. What do you do? Do you pull out the wallet and say, hey, officer, how are you? Hey, here is some lunch. Before even he tells you why he has stopped you. Or are you able to say, you know what, I'm sorry, I made a mistake, and wait for the consequences? Is your spiritual antenna alert to remind you when you're in that position, when you're about to do it, that your spiritual antenna says, wait a minute, who do you belong to? Who are you presenting? Amen. The conscience needs to be uh, raised. So, I want us to understand that this morning we are looking at leaving this place more spiritual than being the natural man. And that's our desire. So I'm going to use just four uh, areas uh, very quickly because time is running out. Four areas to help us understand the spiritual man and the natural man um, in terms of who God wants us to be. We know that we are the natural man, born of the woman. But God wants us to be better. And to understand this, we are going to use these four areas. Self-control. Yeah? Amen? Self-control. It's a, a big one for all of us, even the born again. Self-examination or reflection. Forgiveness. Somebody say forgiveness. Forgiveness. That one is a big one. Dependence or servitude, dependence, or servitude. And so when you read this uh, scripture, if you go back and read 1 Corinthians 1, and then chapter 1 and chapter 2, you realize that Paul had just been dealing with uh, a conflict, division in the church of Corinth. And if you know that history very well, you find that the church of Corinth was, of course, uh, near, near Athens. Corinth is, was near Athens. And that reminds you of what in the history? Yeah, the C Greeks, isn't it? Some of the Greek personalities that you remember who were well-known. Plateau, 
Eh? Aristotle, Socrates, those powerful people that are uh, always talked about. And so because they were guys who were very sharp and wise, they always did things with the wisdom of man. And so there was conflict that was caused by wisdom of man. And we have seen it even in our churches where conflict is just raised because people think, for me I know more, so what I suggest should flow. Another one says, no, but me I have a PhD, so what I suggest should flow. All right? Another one says, no, 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 I am the CEO. And so I lead a company with many people, so you need to listen. And you find that even in our church. So he was dealing with that, and you will find that he had a challenge now, and he was telling the people of Corinth that everything else about me forget. The only thing that I am here to do and I have chosen to do is speak about Christ and him crucified, full stop. The rest, and yet he had all the opportunity. He had had an encounter with the Lord. In our today's time, someone can open up a church, a church because of that. I had an encounter with the Lord. The, the, the way Paul had an encounter with the Lord from soul to soul to Paul, he would open a church, call it soul to Paul church, Christ living church, yeah? Because he has an, had an encounter. But Paul said everything else. The important thing is I speak about Christ and him crucified. That's it. Nothing else. And we see Paul in this situation and he's faced with the same situation. But he finds himself in a situation where he has to preach about certain things and reject other things. And that was a big issue for him. So when you go back in, as you read, you'll find some of that background there. So quickly, self-control. The natural man places no restraint upon his lifestyle. The natural man lives a lifestyle of excessive in every area. He will do everything. If it is drinking, drink to the, 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 you know, to the trenches. I love uh, brother... Samson Sabiti Kagonyera, who preaches here. I think he was here during the overnight also. And he was telling us how sometime he was coming back from the drinking sprees and there's a place where they would always reach and they said they were ghosts. And uh, of course he was drunk. So one eye, one eye was looking here, another eye, and he says he saw something and he believes it was a ghost. But because he was drunk, he doesn't know even whether it was a ghost. But people used to say there was a ghost and he was drunk. And then his folly goes to say, I say it's the same thing. I saw something and they start running. But you see, what I'm trying to say is some of these lifestyles can take you to the extremes. Drinking, even gluttony. And gluttony, that one cuts across. You find someone, they have gone for a function and, you know, the hotels are very sharp these days. They know how to, you know, uh, limit you, they will give you a smaller plate, not the other large ones, and you find someone wants to steal the smaller plate, still put the same amount of food that they would put on a large plate, and things are overflowing, and, 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 and that is not Christ-like. That is a natural man, pure natural man. As a spiritual man, please, you need to have that self-control. When it's feasting, they want to feast until they are sick. And even feast more, even when they are sick. Yeah? If there's any device, if there is anything that shows any kind of thing to do with a natural man, they will go for it. Any form of vice, they will go for it. They will not hesitate. While the spiritual man, when it comes to self-control, he understands. Proverbs 23, verse 29, 35. Those who linger over wine, who go to sample bowels of mixed wine, do not gaze at the wine when it's red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Oh. That is Proverbs 23, verse 29, 35. So the spiritual man understands that God forbids drunkenness. God does not like gluttony. He understands God forbids gluttony. The same scripture, Proverbs 23, verse 20 
and 21, do not join those who drink too much on wine or gorge themselves on meat. Hmm? And gluttons become poor and drowsiness <laughs> clothes them in rags. So gluttony can actually lead to poverty according to the scriptures here. Amen. Amen. It's a difficult someone, right? While the natural man sees no restraint upon his lifestyle, the spiritual man understands that there must be restraint to be a pleasing or to be pleasing to God. There has to be restraint. There has to be some level of self-control. And because of time, I'm just going to rush through this. Self-examination, which is reflection. Do we take time to reflect? You find that the natural man is, is the center of all activity. He wants to be eh? the center. Everything is about them. When they're in the place, talk about them. Talk, don't talk about anyone else. You, you've heard those people. Where, when you're around them, they're talking about themselves. You know, the other day, I went, I got this, or I bought a car. Now I'm building this house. Now everything is about them. Self, self-centeredness. They are not, they do not take time to reflect and try to understand that other people are there. There are some people who are probably going through harder times. Talking about your car is not an important thing right now. Self-examination. That time to be able to think about you. Introspection of yourself. We have seen uh, the attitude of the Pharaoh. The Pharaoh, and I'm sure we know this, when he died, he would be buried with all the family, alive. I mean, what kind of selfishness is that? that? Can't you say that I don't want them? No, they would bury the Pharaoh with his family and all his things. I mean, what kind of selfishness is that? I mean, you, you just don't understand some of these people. King Belshazzar in Daniel uh, chapter 5, this guy comes out and, you know, brings out all this gold, silver, and whatever he's holding a banquet and everyone is enjoying themselves and, uh, you know, until a time the Lord, because they're worshipping other gods, in all this they're worshipping other gods, and the Lord puts a writing on the wall and the king says, bring my interpreters, diviners. Everyone was brought and they all said, man, king, this one we don't understand. We don't know what this means. Until the wife came and says, there is one person who has the spirit of God, when your father was still here, he's the guy who helped. Hallelujah. They went for Daniel and it, the, the rest was his story. He comes and interprets everything and he is able to tell the king exactly what the words meant. But the man, King Belshazzar, was just self-centered. He wanted everything around himself until God showed himself. And for some of us, God will show himself. And then you will wake up and realize that you need uh, to, 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 to be more of a spiritual man than the natural man. Amen. He's confident of himself. He has an attitude of Naaman. Naaman comes and they tell him you have to go and wash. He's like, Who, what are you talking about? Me? With all my chepes here, eh? what are you saying? I have to go. Come and talk to me. Ah, ah. The prophet says, no, man. I am a man of God, so go and wash. And thank God he listened to the, 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 the maid servant. But that attitude of Naaman, the Pharisees, he always sees himself as the standard for everyone else. He's the standard. You should look at me. I am the one. I mean, I can go on and on. Herald. Herod, the same thing happened with Herod until he was eaten up by worms and he died. You know that story in, 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 uh, um, about Herod. The spiritual man, on the other hand, sees all weaknesses and throws himself upon God's mercy. He sees weaknesses in himself, accepts them, and goes to God asking for mercy. Do you look at yourself and know those mistakes that you have? Are you able to look at those mistakes and acknowledge them? We see people that many times do not think that for them, you know, they have any weaknesses. But we have weaknesses and we have to acknowledge them. He always considers others before self. We know the story of Tabitha, who is Dorcas as well, in Acts 9. Helped the poor, was always doing good. 
the Macedonian brothers in 2 Corinthians 8 also, they did everything to help others. During their severe trial, their overwhel- overflowing joy, and their extreme poverty, they welled up in rich generosity. I mean, those two are so contradictory in the same sentence that they were extremely poor, but they welled up in generosity. So while they were poor, they were very generous. Some of us are so uh, you know, blessed and the Lord has really endowed us with the Lord, but we cannot be able to bless others. These guys were poor, but were able to bless others. The spiritual man recognizes that he needs help to overcome. Nothing he can do of his own power will be able to help him succeed. He recognizes he needs help. And many of us need that help. He looks at the true standard, the one true standard, the one true standard for his code of behavior. And that's the the standard of God. That's the standard. We all have to live by the standard of God. And we, in James, James 1, chapter 20, uh, 21 and, uh, to verse 25, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Don't just listen. After you have heard the message or after you've read the word, do what it says. Hallelujah. So while the natural man looks to self, the spiritual man looks outside of himself. If you're a spiritual man, avoid always looking at self. Look at others. Look at serving. Look at helping others. Forgiveness. This is a big one. I thought I would have time, but I think I'm running out of time. But forgiveness. Forgiveness is the key. Is the key to your deliverance, to your being blessed or not being blessed. The moment you hold unforgiveness and you will speak to people who have done deliverance, they will tell you, the moment you hold someone in unforgiveness, everything, even for you, you're actually denying yourself more. It hurts you more than the person you are, you are, you are not forgiving. Believe me or not, unforgiveness hurts you more than the other person. Forgiveness, forgiveness, forgiveness. I remember there was a time we were doing some deliverance and we got to a point where the demons were not leaving until one of us had a revelation from the Lord and says, I have a feeling there's a spirit of unforgiveness. Is there someone in your family that you have not, you know, released and the person breaks down and starts crying and Sometimes you don't know whether it's the <laughs> demons that are crying because they can also pretend, you know, starts crying. But long story short, because I don't have time, this person reveals that they were holding their stepdad that had done something wrong to them. And the moment they were led out of uh, the prayer of repentance and, and forgiveness and they released it and they said it, immediately it was like, removing a stone, they were released and you could tell because you know, when you're doing deliverance, you know, you know what has been holding them immediately left. So unforgiveness, unfortunately, I don't have time, but this is a, something that you need to understand. The natural man sees no wisdom in forgiveness. And because of that, he will not forgive. This, it doesn't make any sense to him. Forgiveness, no, he, he in turn forgives no one if he does not need to ask for forgiveness. Asking for forgiveness is a sign of weakness. Eh? Natural man. And you, for us men, I think we fall cul- culprits there. Eh? You don't want to apologize to your wife. You don't want to apologize to your children. The other day I found I had, uh, you know, uh, I chose my daughter wrongly. I had to apologize. With all the humility, you come and say, you know what? Because they had done it before, you assume that now it's the, sa- the same thing. They have done it. And yet they have not done it. And then you realize, and sometimes you say, ah, but the other time you did it, so there's no problem. No, you come and say, you know what? I'm sorry that I ever chose you because I know you didn't do it. Forgiveness, yeah? And asking for forgiveness. That's very important, asking for forgiveness. The spiritual man, the spiritual man understands the practices uh, and practices a life of forgiveness. 
and you read this, David is one of those who did that, Psalm 51. That whole psalm is about, you know, repentance and asking for forgiveness. John, 1 John 1, 8 to 9, we all know that scripture. Eh? If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You learn that in the Bible study, right? He recognizes that others make mistakes and offers forgiveness. Hallelujah. He sees forgiveness as a source of strength. It's a source of strength. Forgiveness is a source of strength. Forgiveness dispels evil. It will help you dispel evil. Forgiveness produces a mind of God. Forgiveness will show love. Oh, I wish I had time. That, that is one thing I wanted to dwell on a lot. But lastly, dependence. The natural man scoffs at the idea of dependence. It does not exist in his vocabulary. He believes that the principle servitude only works as much as it is going to help him gain something. As long as it's not helping him in any way, no, that does not, it's not in his vocabulary. He will not, um, other, he serves no one else because he is too busy serving himself. Too busy serving himself. And many of us are culprits to that. And I will end at this because I know that many, all of us are, we are called to serve. We are called to serve in one way or another. And I have I've served in this place for in many years, in many areas. And um, the one thing that I remember when I was growing up, and I've shared this before, is that they used to always, when I was young, I would always hear people saying, ah, these Protestants, Church of Uganda, they never complete their projects. And guess what? Everywhere I would go, I would find a church incomplete, Church of Uganda. Any church you go in the parish, not complete, Church of Uganda. I, I said, God, really, what is wrong with us? Really, we also should be ashamed of ourselves. And so I told God, you know what, God, for me, when they started with the building the cathedral, I told God, I am going to serve on that committee, either until they take me off or until we roof the church. That's what I committed myself. Between me and God. Because I say this business, what is it that makes the others be able to build and for us we cannot build? So I was, I was chosen on SCP. I joined the SCP team and I continued serving. Secretary at some point, communication. For 10 years consecutive, I was on that committee from the beginning. Guess what? Our term ended. There's a term that ended before the roofing. I said, good. We agreed. It's roofing stage, so I have to be on the next committee. Of course, they just choose, so you don't know. And I was chosen on the, the next committee. I said, aha, uh -huh, we, we have to roof. And then at some point, remember, we had challenges to finish. I said, good, we have to finish this thing. I am not leaving until we are finished. And indeed, my last term of serving, during the, the last year, because they would give us two terms, the last year, we roofed. And I said, God, I think our deal is accomplished. And guess what? I was not invited for the next committee, and I said, God, thank you, because this is what we agreed upon. Amen. So we need to learn to serve. We need to offer ourselves to serve. Be the spiritual man and allow yourself to serve others. Don't be the natural man that is always focusing on center, center, self, but allow the Lord to use you. Let us pray. Father, we bless you and we thank you for this time. We thank you that you speak to us and uh, we thank you that you minister to us each time. For each one of us that is here and online that has known you and probably for one reason or another has backslidden or has taken uh, a back seat, Lord, we pray that you will convict them to be able to become more the spiritual man than the natural man. And for anyone that is here that has not known you, that has not that known that sal the salvation 
the power of salvation. Lord, I pray that they will hear your voice this morning, that you will convict them and that you will cause them to become the spiritual man. Be a spiritual man that will honor you, will serve you, and will serve others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen, amen, indeed, and amen. Thank you so much for such a powerful message. It is an appeal to each one of us to put on that spiritual man and put away that natural man. So in that natural man comes and wants to take over. Seek the spiritual man and let him reign in your life and then you see God at work. Hallelujah. Yes, we are now going to give in into the house of the Lord. And after our offertory, we shall have general thanksgiving. Let's have those who want to give thanks to the Lord. Psalm 5 that was read as we started this service, verse 3. In the morning, Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you and wait expectantly. Praise the Lord. Amen. We join this in thanking God. For indeed, we that expectantly wait on him, the Lord is faithful. He grants us blessings, he hears our prayers. We especially join with the family of uh, Dr. Alan Shinobi, who has recently won the international award among the lawyers, and Madam is right here to say thank you to the Lord. Let's give God a big hand clap for that. <laughs> Lord, thank you that indeed you hear our voices when we come to you. 
that when we lay our requests and expectantly wait on you despite the tests of waiting, you grant us testimonies of your divine intervention. Thank you for Dr. Alan Shinobi and his dear wife and family, for the international award for lawyers that you have granted unto him. We pray that him and all these that are kneeling before us here, before you in your presence, and we all here that bear testimony of your divine intervention, will continue to live lives that are renewed in the spirit, that will overcome the flesh, that will be able to live lives set apart for you, that will be a people that are ambassadors of justice, ambassadors of hope, that extend your forgiveness and your love to the community that we are in, causing a transformation. May the blessing of God, dear brothers and sisters, kneeling in his presence here, and to you, the family of Alan Shinobi. God's blessing, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit rest unto you. May you continue to see the goodness, the power, and the grace of the Lord in your lives, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Let us continue in prayer. Lord, we thank you for your love towards us, for you have said to us continually in the scriptures, I have not left you as orphans, but I've sent you my spirit to teach you, to help you, to encourage you, the spirit to guide you in all truth. We thank you for giving up your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for us who owe you everything. Jesus healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, Jesus fulfilled your gracious will. Pour your refreshing spirit on us this morning as we remember him in the way he commanded through these gifts of your creation. That on the same night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way after supper, he took a cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, drink this all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Together, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again recording his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forevermore. Amen. Dear friends, the body and the blood of Christ preserve you to eternal life. Song number 17.
forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. There's forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. There is forgiveness in the blood of Jesus. He washes white as snow. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet in your kingdom. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us have a moment of reflection, especially to think about the word of God that has been read to us this morning and the word of God that has been proclaimed to us this morning. The scripture says in Galatians 5, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. Keep in step with the Spirit of God. And dear friends, what you feed is what grows. If you feed your flesh, your natural man, your natural man will grow and overwhelm you. Consequently, if you feed the Spirit by the very word of God, led by the Spirit of God, you will grow in your spirituality and overwhelm anything that is not of the Lord. Grant us grace every day, Heavenly Father, that we will grow in knowing you in our spirituality. And this will translate into pleasing you and walking aligned to your will. We are mindful of the challenges that surround us even as we go out this morning to our businesses. As we go back to the everyday hustles and bustles, we are mindful, Lord, of the overwhelming pressures. But we know that when you hold us by the hand, we'll be victorious. And so I pray for each one of us this morning that is anxious about the pressures that are waiting for them down the street, Lord, that by your Spirit, they will be victorious. I pray against all traps and tricks of the evil one, all the things that have been set ahead of them, maybe their supervisors, their competitors in business, their colleagues, whatever it is, I ask that in the name of Jesus, nothing will overwhelm them, for you will raise even a higher standard than what the devil has put out there. Lord, I ask that we do not just go out in our power, but we'll go out in your power. And so, dear friends, brothers and sisters, the peace of God that transcends human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in the knowledge of God and of his son, Jesus Christ. And I pray that the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you. The blessing of God keep you in step with the Spirit, so you will overcome the flesh. And that blessing never leave us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve Christ. Amen. 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 God bless you. The good Lord bless you. Choir will give us a song as we go out. Song number 45.